Okay, this is problem 41. This is called the Christmas Club problem. And it reads like this. You decide to open a Christmas Club account at a bank that pays 6% annual interest compounded monthly. You deposit $100 on the 1st of January and on the 1st of the succeeding month months through November. How much will you have in your account on the 1st of December? So what's happening is you're putting $100 in at, in January 1st. You put $100 in on February 1st, March 1st, April 1st, etc., etc. Until you get to November 1st, you put in $100. Then on December 1st, basically you want to take the money out so you can buy Christmas presents in December. The question is how much money are you going to have? Well, this is going to turn out to be a geometric sum, sum of a geometric series. It's probably the hardest problem that we've had so far. And it's easy to make a mistake on this. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the geometric sum formula that we worked on with Kieran. I'm just going to write it down because we're not going to derive it again. What that formula said was if you had A plus A times R, plus a times r squared plus dot 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 a to the r and here we go n minus one in other words there are n total terms first term it doesn't have an r that's why it ends with n minus one but the total number of terms is n you can always count that and that's going to be equal to a times r to the n minus one over r minus 1. We're going to use this formula to solve this, so I just thought I'd write it down first. Now, in this problem, one way to approach it is to just add up how much interest you get on each of the $100 deposits. In each month, here we have that the interest rate is equal to 0 0.06 or 6%. And that means that the amount that you're going to uh, increase in each month is you're going to take that 6% and divide it by 12 since it's compounded 12 times a year. So the R, the ratio, is going to turn out to be 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. That's equal to 1.005. That's the amount by, by the, that's the growth, percentage growth in each month. So when you take $100 and put it in, in November, it's going to increase by that amount, 1.005. So the money you're going to have at the end, you can write it like this. 100 times 1.005. That's the deposit from November. Then you can add to it the deposit you made in October. That's been in there for two months. So that's going to be like this. 100, 1.005 squared. Then you keep going until you get to the deposit you made in January. Now you have to find out how many times did that get compounded? How many times did how many months went by? February would have represented the first month for that. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. December 1st, that's 11 months. <clears throat> so you have to take the 100, you have to multiply this by 11. Okay? Now, we want this to be equal to A plus A times R plus dot 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 A to the R to the N minus 1. Well, A is going to equal to 100 times 1.005. That's equal to 100.5. That's just the first term in the series. The R in the series, that turns out to be 1.005. We've got that. Okay, we got that. The only other thing in this series that we need to know is what the N is. Um,
close the end. Now, here, just to think about this, then is the number of terms in the series. That's how this end came up. The number of terms in the series is 11. So n is, is 11. Um, okay? And by using, by just by determining those conditions, we can then use this formula for the sum, which says that the actual money we're going to have at the end is equal to a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. And that, now we can write that using these, these things. That's a 100.5. This is just the sum of the geometric series now. And this will be 1.00y to the 11th power minus 1 divided by 1.005 minus 1, which is 0 0.005. Okay, let's put it in to my calc and see how I do. One point zero zero five to the eleventh power. Okay, subtract one. That gives me about one point zero six. Turns out. Subtract one, which gives me about 0 0.06, divided by 0 0.005, that gives me about 11. A little bit more than 11. 11.28. Now I multiply that by 100.5. That comes out to 1133.56. And that is the amount of money I should have on December 1st. Now, the first time I did this, I, I, I got a mistake. I did this a couple times and I kept putting the wrong N in there or I put in the wrong A. I had to go through it. But when I did do it and I got it wrong, I for I could tell it was wrong because there's a certain amount of common sense here. And that common sense says the actual amount of money you put in was eleven hundred dollars. Because you put in a hundred dollars a month for eleven months. So it's gotta come out more than eleven hundred eleven hundred dollars. Okay. The next thing is, even though there is compounding monthly, roughly this is six percent annual interest rate. Which means you should earn 6% per year. But because you're putting the money in once per month, on average, the, the money is really only in there for about a half a year. Because some of it is in there for more than six months, but some is in there for less than six months. The average amount of time is six months. So probably, you're only going to end up getting effectively about 3% of the total. Plus a little bit more due to compounding. Now, that 3% is about $30. And it turns out that's kind of what you're getting here. You're getting $30 of interest on this account. First time I did this, I put the wrong value N in or whatever. I got a number like around 1,030 or something. And I knew that was wrong because I put in more money than that. And then the second time I did it, I came up with a number that was like 1,200. And I said, that doesn't sound right because that sounds like too much. I knew the number had to be 1,100. And then it couldn't possibly be more than about $60, really. Um, so then I just did this a little bit more carefully. I made sure I got the right formula. I made sure I had the right value for A, the right value for R, and the right value for N. But that, that took a little while. Okay? And this is, happens to be one of them where the answer is in the back of my book, and uh, now I know I got it right. Okay? Anyway, that was a tough one.